Not long ago, we had a small incident with my daughter's engine. For some reason, I believe we may have missed a few oil changes, but I'll have to check with her on that. This was going to require a lot of rework, and you'll see why in this video. The first thing I had to deal with was all these engine connectors. There are connectors everywhere, and it seems like no two are the same. They were all a total pain in the neck to remove, and in the end, I ended up damaging some and just reordering new ones because that was much easier. This was the hardest part of the entire build for me. The rest of it went relatively smooth, except for the fact that I ended up in the snowy and rainy driveway trying to fix about half of what was wrong with it. Oh, and then there was this time where I started it on fire when I was doing a little welding in the engine compartment, but we won't show that part. Hey, Wayne. Got me a set of uh, removal pliers I think will work. Oh yeah, that worked. And I got one more spot to do. Try it up here, see if it'll work. See if I can get an angle. So at this point, I began taking the engine apart and I started with the vacuum pump because one of the symptoms besides the engine running extremely rough was no brakes. I found the culprit and it was definitely that vacuum pump along with the one in the opening slides. We'll just refer to her as you know who for now, but look at all these broken parts that I found inside of the vacuum pump and inside of the motor, mostly in the head and scattered all around in the cams and whatnot. It was a real mess and had me very nervous about what else I would find in the motor. The next fatality in the engine was the exhaust side cam. You'll see the bang pop up here and right above that is the end of the cam and you can see that it has been opened up in this red circle here. Those walls should be parallel to each other and they're on about a 10 degree uh, opening on each side. The engine was just filthy and gunky and sludgy and just in really rough shape. Here you see the cam again, some of the pieces that are broken off of it, some of the other damage and things that took place while the uh, oil pump had gotten clogged. There's a small filter in there, but when the oil gets to a certain thickness, it just can't uh, pump anymore and it seizes up and creates breaks and other damage to this cam. So. Here you kind of see a little bit of that. Here's a circle that is a finger that was busted off of the reluctor and uh, lots of nicks and scratches and things like that. So I had to take the cam out and have that replaced. And I was really surprised at how cheap these cams are. Um, but then again, seeing how they break so easily, <laughs> doesn't surprise me that they're cheap. Here are a couple more shots of the cam where it was damaged on the end. Rest in peace, my little friend. I got online with Rock Auto and ordered the new vacuum pump and the new cam. And all that came in a pretty reasonable amount of time, which was great. And uh, while I had it apart, of course, I went to the auto parts store and bought a new timing chain. But I didn't find any damage to the cam phasers and the gears, no chip teeth or anything. So I was pretty satisfied with that. So this next step was to get the rest of this tore apart and put together. Okay, everybody, here is the upper half of a GMC terrain Ecotec 1.5 liter turbo engine. And I want to show you kind of the condition of this. Look at all this sludge and, and build up. I mean, it's just like, look at that. This is why we say change your oil, at least on the scheduled, look at this, at least on the scheduled basis, if not more often. But all of this sludge down here in the bottom and everything I'm going to clean out, um, but you know, like what's the big deal? What can happen? 
Well, you'll notice this pump is not here any longer. And here are the fragments that I pulled out that I've been able to find so far on the top of this head. So now I'm gonna to get to cleaning this and uh, inspect everything really well. I'm gonna check the timing and do all that. Uh, this reluctor is supposed to be in line with the top of the cam. If I got that, this reluctor arm is supposed to be in line with the top of the cam and it looks like it is not. Uh, it looks like when this engine or that pump seized up and broke the uh, pump that engages with the cam right here. Thank God the cam didn't get broke. Um, it'll tend to knock this out of time. So I'll check that here in a few minutes, but please do like your dad always told you to do. Change your oil. Okay, here are the two cams side by side. The old and the new, which is pretty obvious. So I laid the new cam right next to the old cam when it was still in the engine. And I marked spots that I could use as reference when I put the new one in. Can't remember what that's called. I know, I know what it's called, but I can't remember right off the top of my head. Anyways, this piece that broke off here, okay, this uh, was right here, right here. Okay, so you can see on this one, it's about 90 degrees or more out of position. I also have these marks. They're like a QR code. So, I think I'm going to put this in the position it's supposed to be in relative to these marks and assume this baby was way out of time, which I'm sure it was. Well, I've got the front one cleaned up. If you look at the back one, you can kind of see the difference. This is not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than what I started with. Look at all that gunk and ugly oil down in there that's just been really destroying things here and it finally took out that uh, vacuum pump so I'll clean her up button her back up and hopefully we're good to go I don't think I'd enter into a beauty contest but she looks a whole lot better and a whole lot cleaner wait till you see the inside of the valve cover check her out that's the before of the uh, inside of the valve cover Some of that stuff down there is just really thick and caked on. Look at that. Look at that. You don't want that. Okay, everybody. I'll see you after dinner. I wanted to pop in a picture of this rocker. This is the full-size rocker for this motor. It's smaller than my pinky. Nothing really special about fender liners except they had to come out and they were extremely muddy. The car has to go down dirt roads to its destination every day. And that was just one of those things that would bug you while you worked on it. And here is where the upper motor mount for the 1.5 liter Ecotec turbo was before I removed it. Here's the upper motor mount from the Ecotec 1.5 liter turbo motor. This is the next piece coming out. Okay, there's the timing cover. Got the alternator down there. Just kind of looking at what gonna have to pull to make this as easy as possible but not miss anything looks like that pulley right there is probably gonna come off 
I'd say probably, I'm not sure, but at least that one bolt right there that's part of that assembly will come off. And then you see those look like 10 millimeter bolts that go all around. Pull those off and they can have access to the timing chain. And have to pull the uh, crank also, the bolt there and the pulley. That one's easy, it's right in front of everything. Okay, here we go. This is the area that uh, the bolts, the broken bolts are in. You can see there's not a lot of space in here for a normal drill. Um, so we've got this one on the top and then there's a center one right there. And then down below, I believe it is, I don't know if you can see my finger, uh, there's stuff in the way there, but anyways, down at the bottom. So there's only two of them that I need to remove. So let's get at it. Okay, everybody. This could rank as one of the dumbest things I've ever tried in my life. Really struggling getting these uh, bolts out of this aluminum casting on the front of the motor. So I'm gonna try to weld my way out of it. Let's see what we get. Okay, right here I'd like to take a minute to tell my friend Hugh, thank you very much. He saw me out working in my driveway in the snow and sleet and thought, I gotta help this dude. So Hugh came over and said, hey, tomorrow we're gonna put that car on a trailer and take it down to the shop that I work at in Royal Oak, which is in the Northern Detroit area, and let you have a warm place to work on this thing. So we did that and we spent a few days over the Christmas holiday putting things back together, getting th making sure things were right, uh, setting the timing, all the jazz that had, had to be done. And Hugh was such a great helper. And I shouldn't say helper, he's a great mechanic. I'm the helper. He uh, really helped me out a lot and I just want to tell him thank you very much for the use of the warm building and the help while we were there working on the car and uh, for helping me get this thing wrapped up. So Hugh, you are the man, I really appreciate you. Now these two pictures here of this 69 GTX just so happen to be Hughes GTX and he's getting close to wrapping this thing up. He's got a 440 in it and this thing sounds amazing. When you hear it, it is just absolutely thunderous and beautiful. So you will be meeting Hugh in the future here and uh, for some special interviews Hugh is the funniest human being you will ever meet. Okay, back to the finishing work. of this video I've put about 700 miles on the car and she's running great I've done three oil changes since I started it and I'm gonna keep doing that for a little while but I sure my daughter the beautiful young lady in the picture is going to change her oil every 3,000 miles right sweetheart daddy loves you <laughs>